Willie McCoy, it's good to hear your voice. Fee, wish I could say the same. This is my Cyberpunk 2077 Nakota radio. You use this radio briefly in the intro of the video game. Hello? Willie McCoy, it's good to hear your voice. And I really liked it, so I thought that I would build my own. So here it is. Inside is a Baofeng UV5R UHF and VHF radio jammed into a custom-made 3D printed and CNC machined casing from the video game Cyberpunk 2077. I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and I think it looks and feels just like the real thing. I mean, real thing being the model from a video game that I would say has never had a physical representation up until this point. So uh, I'll say this is the real thing because this is probably the only physical one of these in existence. Some cool things that I'll point out before I turn it on. Uh, I think this is my favorite thing that I worked quite hard on was getting the uh, SMA connector for the antenna to actually be on this little pod. So you can remove and change out the antenna for any antenna you'd like. And this SMA socket is actually connected through to the original Baofeng UV5R. So um, yeah, you can replace this antenna with anything you'd like. It's got the cable tie, just like the reference model. So there you have it. Without further ado, let me show you its features. <laughs> this is what I was 3D printing originally from my really crappy 3D printer. Um, the nozzle was a bit jammed up. It was a 0.8 mil nozzle, but it was under extruding. Uh, it's PETG. That was quite old and waterlogged, and it's not printing very well. So even when I printed a better one than this and sanded it and used high build primer and painted it and tried to clean it up, it still looks really bad. The little bezel plate that goes on here also looks really bad. You would have seen this in my last video if you've been following along with this project. PCBWay saw this and reached out and said, we can help you, which I thought was really cool. And uh, they offered to help manufacture these parts on their 3D printers, which are much better than mine. I was able to redesign all the parts with that in mind, which meant I was able to, instead of designing for a, a crapped out Ender 3, I was able to design for an HP Multijet Fusion, which I've worked with in the past with some other projects. So uh, this part is what this ultimately became. And you can see the, the resolution, it's just insane. So this is all printed in nylon, which is far stronger than my PETG, far more flexible. And the surface finish is completely different from an FDM printer. This is kind of the main chassis. And then the back plate here clicks on. Um, and that's where all the electronics go. Uh, the TPU outer cover then slips on over the front, a bit like that. I won't put it on fully, but you get the idea. This is SLS TPU, so selective laser sintering. I mean, it's a really cool part. It lets me have that rubberized finish that you'd be familiar with from your drill, even though this is butylene rubber on top of uh, glass reinforced nylon, I would imagine. You'd have to check out AVE to get the actual specs, but it gives you the same finish, right? Like this is hard plastic body, but with some soft rubber grips attached to it. There's no way I would have been able to pull off, you know, using my own printer. So being able to do it like this obviously creates a far better and cooler final product. The other thing I really wanted was for the brand name to be highly recognizable. So on, on my print from my printer, you could see uh, 
by the time I sanded it, filled it, plus just with the low print quality, these words were, were unreadable. So I had this machined um, out of aluminium and then painted. PCBA offers that in addition to the printing. So the same parts came in the same bag and uh, having some of the pieces in aluminium and some of them in plastic, I think adds a real nice touch to the final product. Uh, the other parts were this little pod that hangs on the side. I cracked this one trying to um, get the SMA cable attached in, but I ordered a couple spares, so that was handy. Uh, and then all these knobs, which I uh, designed to look as similar to the reference photo as possible, and they look pretty good. Um, the original doesn't have a knob on the side, but I would need a place to put the rotary encoder to navigate the menus on the Arduino. So I made a very similar knob to use for that purpose, but much more shallow. So that's really all the parts from PCBWay. Let's put this whole thing together and see what we come up with. So you turn the radio on with the volume knob, just like in the original, except now instead of just that little LCD and a keypad, you're greeted with this OLED menu and you navigate it with this rotary encoder. Just to briefly show off a couple of its functions, uh, we'll click here on UHF channels and you can select from all 80 UHF channels and I'll select channel number one. And you see there it's typed in the frequency. So the storage on the Baofeng isn't being used at all. We're just emulating key presses. So whenever you press on channel one, like I just did, it is typing four, seven, six, four, two, five on the keypad and entering in these numbers. Uh, and all of that is stored on the Arduino. So you have a nearly infinite uh, number of channels you could store on the radio. So for example, let's just do channel two. There you go. So that's the UHF channel menu option. It's the same as the VHF channel option. The scan works as you'd expect. You click on scan and it will start to scan the range just like it would on the Baofeng. You turn off scan. Um, keypad is a cool little option which lets you press any of those keys. So if you wanted to enter your own frequency, let's just say one, two, three, Zero, zero, zero. You could. You could enter any frequency you want on this keypad, or more likely, you want to navigate the menu. So I've just been in there to turn the voice off because you don't want to hear the talking every time I click a button. But you can navigate the menu just like on the Baofeng and change any settings that you might want. Our next option is the FM radio, which we click on this and this is pretty cool. I'm pretty happy with how this all turned out. Uh, you click on this toggle FM, which will change it over to the FM radio. I'm inside of a, a shipping container, so I'm not going to get any reception here. But you can see that you set a frequency on this little dial. In this case, let's toggle this to 1047, and then hit set frequency. That's going to type in that frequency. Again, we don't have any actual radio stations uh, we can reach in this shipping container, but you get the idea. Uh, and then scan works the same way. You can scan the FM band if you'd like. Nothing there. So we back out of there. We have a configuration setting, which has a macro um, that's been programmed to change the squelch. However, I will just exit that FM mode. There we go and we'll go into this config. And here you can click on squelch. It's the only setting I have programmed in. And you would set your squelch level. Let's just say we want squelch level three and then click on set squelch. And that will navigate the menu for you by pressing menu zero squelch menu exit to set that. So um, you could program as many macros as you want within here to perform various functions on the radio, like to enable the voice 
or to change the voice from English to Chinese or to change the, the background color of the backlight. All of those kind of settings you could uh, program in here to, to make them easier to use. I just did Squelch as an example. Uh, and then our last setting on this menu is to check the battery voltage. If you click on this setting, you'll get a display with the battery voltage. And we're reading 8.1 volts at the moment, which is great. So yeah, there it is. Receives and transmits beautifully and uh, packs quite a lot of features. And I think, in my opinion, looks like a pretty cool radio. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it.